I fuse Lunalite Tired Cat and Lunalite Vanilla Rabbit into Lunalite Rat Dancer. I guess it would be a bit disingenuous of me to say that Lone Lights were the most enjoyable archetype to come out of Arc 5's lineup of girls, but really, what was the competition? Melodious, which interrupt their own game plan, Wind Witches, more of a synchro engine than anything, and Lurilusks, which had a boss monster so poorly designed it led to the premature banning of two cards completely unrelated to the archetype. Despite being a relatively small archetype, capping out at 13 cards, and arguably lacking in spell and trap support, Lone Lights don't feel ostensibly unfinished or poorly designed, and they focus on a fairly unique approach to fusion-based OTK strategy. They they also have a bit of an awkward name in the TCG, simply being named Moonlight in the OCG, but I'd rather take an awkward localization over having Except Maiden of the Moonlight and the Black Rose Moonlight Dragon in every card effect. So let's kick it off with our first monster, Lunalite Black Sheep, a level 2 Dark Beast Warrior with 100 attack and 600 defense, which you can discard to activate one of the following effects. Add one Lunalite monster from your graveyard to your hand except Lunalite Black Sheep, or add one Polymerization from your deck to your hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard as a fusion material for a fusion set, Summon, you can add to your hand one face-up Lunalite Pendulum monster from your extra deck, or one Lunalite monster from your graveyard, except Lunalite Black Sheep. Black Sheep is an absolute three-off in any build, because the importance of a poly searcher in a fusion-based archetype can never be understated, but its other effects play into the card's importance as well. Not only does it search polymerization and offer monster recovery without taking up your summon, but it can also be a considerable combo extender when used as a fusion material due to the secondary recovery effect. The two Lunalite Pendulum monsters don't really tend to find themselves face-up in the extra deck too often, but the the option is overall nice to have. There is not much reason to run any less than 3 sheep. Next up is Lunalite White Rabbit, a level 2 with 800 attack and defense, and when this card is normal summoned, you can target one Lunalite monster in your graveyard except White Rabbit, special summon it in fence position. Once per turn, you can target spell and trap cards your opponent controls up to the number of other Lunalite cards you control, return them to the hand. The revival effect seems pretty powerful at first, and while it's true that it helps out with recovering fusion materials or triggering some special summon effects, the fact that it takes up the normal summon puts a bit of a dent in the card's usage, as there's a certain other monster you would most rather save up your normal summon for. The back row removal effect is cute, but by the time you have several other Lunalites on the field alongside Rabbit, the effect probably doesn't have much utility outside of removing potential battle traps, which are barely ran nowadays. Rabbit has enough utility to warrant one or two copies, but don't run three though, it's just too much. Who can handle that many rabbits? Lunalite Purple but but oh, mm, whoa. Lunalite Purple Butterfly is a level 3 with 1000 attack and defense, which you can send from your hand or the field to the graveyard, then target one Lunalite monster you control, it gains 1000 attack until the end of this turn. You can banish this card from your graveyard, special summon one Lunalite monster from your hand. You can only use this effect of Butterfly once per turn. It's fine, nothing offensively bad or ostensibly amazing about it. A simple attack boost that sets up the graveyard and gives a neat floating effect. I could think of worse butterflies. It doesn't hurt to run a couple of them, but don't stack up on too many. Next we have their first pendulum monster, Lunalite Tiger. <laughs> It's a light monster this time around, scale 5, it has 1200 attack and 800 defense, its pendulum effect lets you special summon a lunalite monster from your graveyard once per turn, however that monster cannot attack, its effects are negated and is destroyed during the end phase, while the monster effect says that when tiger on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon one lunalite monster from your graveyard, which you can only do once per turn. Run 3 Tiger The pendulum revival effect may seem underwhelming compared to white rabbit, but the point here is that it doesn't take up your normal summon, and due to not being a hard once per turn, it's reusable as long as you have ways to bounce it back into your hand. The pendulum effect does an amazing job at recovering fusion materials or assisting in link plays, and the monster effect offers the same type of recovery but with zero downsides at the cost of the card being destroyed. This synergizes fairly well with the effect of the new Beast Warrior Link monster, Firefighting Dharmadol, leading into simple combo extension as well as making room for several extra deck monsters. The floating effect also works during the opponent's battle phase as it can lead into several other Lunalites with even more floating, which is a good stalling option. On top of everything, it's a light monster which enables BLS as attack up. Tiger is an absolute staple and should never be left out. Another staple in our first level 4 is Lunalite Kaleidotrick. Kaleido is not a color, it's a... It's a level 4 with 1400 attack and 800 defense, and once per turn, you can send one Lunalite monster from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard. The name of this face-up card on the field can be treated as the sent monsters if you use this fusion material this turn. If this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target one polymerization in your graveyard, add it to your hand. You can only use this effect of Lunalite Kaleido check once per turn. If this card is banished, you can activate this effect. This turn, your opponent's cards and effects cannot be activated during the battle phase. Funny story, people used to run fusion tag in Lunalites for a straight year before Kaleido trick 
it was released. I know, what morons! The insane level of synergy this card has with the rest of the archetype is downright ridiculous. Being able to dump any Lunalite from the main and extra deck, along with copying its name for a fusion summon, makes for one of the most versatile archetypal monsters in the game. The dumping effect leads to amazing graveyard setup, mainly due to enabling a two-card combo for their best fusion monster, which we'll get to in a few minutes, securing a Lunalite monster in the graveyard for their Miracle fusion card, as well as simply copying the name of one of their fusions, which offers a shortcut in their three-step ladder. A detail to keep in mind is that it sends a monster to the graveyard as cost, so you can activate this effect to dump a Lunalite even when under negation. Recycling polymerization is also kind of a big deal, leading to potential play extension or a comeback later on, and the banish effect offers a good amount of battle phase protection from... I don't fucking know, Nutrient Z. Ain't nothing like a good Mondo! <laughs> This effect is usually applied as a result of using the card as material for the archetypal miracle fusion, but it also works when banished by any other means, which enables a slight degree of splashability. Overall, a compact package of some extremely useful effects to the point where the card would only be better if it flipped the table over and shot the other player. Lunalite Blue Cat is their next level 4, it has 1600 attack and 1200 defense, and if this card is special summoned, you can target one Lunalite monster you control except Cat, its attack becomes double its original attack until the end of this turn. You can only use this effect of Lunalite Blue Cat once per turn. If this card on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon one Lunalite monster from your deck. The special summon effect absolutely helps out in the OTK strategy, sometimes boosting your fusion monsters to attack values of 7000 and above, and you'll most often trigger it using a certain spell card of theirs, or in some cases, White Rabbit. Nicely enough, it's also a level 4, so if you dump it with Kaleido Chick and manage to revive it, you can proceed into a rank 4 monster, some of which can help you go into more extensive combos, such as four Tricks, which we'll get into later. The Destruction Floating effect also serves to make setting Blue Cat a tolerable first turn option if you have no access to other plays, as it can float into more copies of itself from the deck, potentially saving you from damage, Mystic Tomato style. While doing so, it does a decent job at setting up your graveyard, and a thing to keep in mind is that this effect can be activated when Blue Cat is destroyed on the field by any means, including your own card effects, so it allows for some experimental shenanigans involving things like Zodiac Barrage, Dragonic Diagram, or even Metal Foes. What I'm saying is you gotta rev up that poof! Play 3 Cat, it's a good cat. Lunalite Crimson Fox is their last level 4, it has 1800 attack and 600 defense, and if this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls, change its attack to zero until the end of this turn. When a card or effect is activated that targets a Lunalite monster you control, you can banish this card from your graveyard, negate the activation, and if you do, each player gains 1000 life points. It's not bad or anything, in fact, it can be a lot more helpful than Blue Cat in some situations, it's just that the archetype already has enough access to Fox's utility without having to resort to its effects. By all means, it's a fine choice, it can make your fusions hit extremely hard, but Blue Cat already has happens to have a similar effect, and it offers some targeting protection with a strange life point gain drawback, which is a tad unnecessary because the Lone Light Fusion monster you end up summoning most of the time already has built-in targeting immunity. Run by preference, but I wouldn't screw around with it too much. Their final main deck monster is Lone Light Wolf. Jesus Christ, more like Lunalite. Oof. Wait, just cut that from the script. It's a level 6 with 2000 attack and 1800 defense, scale 1. Its pendulum effect says you cannot pendulum summon monsters except Lunalites. This effect cannot be negated, and once per turn, you can fusion summon one Lunalite fusion monster from your extra deck by banishing fusion materials listed on it from your field or graveyard. Its monster effect simply allows Lunalite monsters you control to inflict piercing damage when attacking. That's your miracle fusion, at least in the pendulum zone. This is what you activate after properly filling up the graveyard, and the best part is that you can basically do it every turn until it gets it also activates Kaleido Chick's effect for that delicious Sermati's beatdown, however, the monster effect is not particularly impressive, and the card's level prevents it from being pendulum summoned due to Tiger's scale 5. Playing 3 can be a bit cloggy, but 2 is perfectly fine. Their first fusion monster is the level 7 Lunalite Cat Dancer. It's got 2400 attack and 2000 defense, requires 2 Lunalite monsters, cannot be destroyed by battle, and once per turn, during your main phase 1, you can tribute one other Lunalite monster for the rest of this turn. The first time each monster your opponent controls will be destroyed by battle, it is not destroyed. Also, this card can attack all monsters your opponent controls twice each this turn. If this card declares an attack, inflicts 100 damage to your opponent. I genuinely love this effect simply due to how unconventional it is for the sake of adhering to the theme of dancing among the enemies, while also being an extremely efficient OTK tool. Sure, it depends on the opponent already having an established board, and 2400 attack might not be enough to run over some bigger monsters, but in combination with Blue Cat, Dancer can clear out the field and dish out significant damage within a single battle phase. The 100 additional burn during each attack is also kinda adorable. You know, making sure they don't end up with enough life points for Messenger of Peace. Cat Dancer is a great card, however, in combination with another Lunalite, it becomes an even nastier kitty, that being Lunalite Panther Dancer. 
This design is targeting me as a person, specifically. It's a level 8 with 2800 attack and 2500 defense, requires Cat Dancer and another Lunar Light monster as materials, must first be fusion summoned with said materials, it cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects and once per turn during your main phase 1, you can activate this effect. For the rest of this turn, the first time each monster your opponent controls would be destroyed by battle, it is not destroyed. Also, this card can attack all monsters your opponent controls twice each this turn. When this card destroys your opponent's monster by battle, this card gains 200 attack until the end of the battle phase. It's Cat Dancer! Dancer, but harder. And that's the opposite of a problem. Panther Dancer is inherently better, having the same double attacking effect but with more attack points, gaining 200 after each fight and not requiring a tribute to activate it. Alongside that, it's immune to destruction effects, which aren't too commonplace nowadays, but it can still save you from the occasional piece of removal. Additionally, here's where Kaleido Check's dumping effect comes into play, being able to load up the graveyard with Cat Dancer, after which you can proceed to use Wolf's effect for a quick miracle fusion into Panther. Not much to say here, except that it's worth running about as much as the previous fusion. However, I think you'll find yourself dumping Panther Dancer with Kaleido Check a lot more than the cat, mainly due to their final fusion monster, Lunalite Leo Dancer. This majestic level 10 has 3500 attack and 3000 defense, requires a fusion of Panther Dancer and two Lunalite monsters, must be fusion summoned with those fusion materials and cannot be special summoned by other ways, cannot be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects. This card can make a second attack during each battle phase and once per turn, at the end of the damage step, if this card attacked a monster, you can destroy all special summon and monsters your opponent controls. I don't think it takes a zoologist to figure out that Leo Dancer is what you want to shit out onto the field as fast as humanly possible when playing this deck. Huge attack value, especially when combined with Blue Cat, complete field wipe after the first attack, a fat 3500 plus damage output right into the opponent's face after the second one, and a very solid amount of protection in case you end up going first. This card is what makes Panther the ideal extra deck target for Kaleido trick unless you're aiming for more extensive combos, but let's be real. Who needs combos when you have big number. In the end, it's recommended to run two of each fusion just to be safe, but you'll most often be going into Leo Dancer, and for very good reason. Their only spell card is Lunalite Perfume, so here's hoping that at some point we get Lunalite Moisturizer and Lunalite Exfoliator. It's a normal spell that lets you special summon one Lunalite monster from your graveyard in defense position. You can banish this card from the graveyard and discard one card, add one Lunalite monster from your deck to your hand. You run three of these at all times, for reasons that should be pretty clear right off the bat. This perfume is more like oil to the gears of the deck, offering fantastic recovery, potential graveyard setup, as well as searching which can get you back on track, all without any trace of a once per turn clause. This card opens up a lot of combo potential for the deck, my personal favorite being this two card combination that leads into Lightstorm Curious and Leo Dancer. Yeah, I'm not reading this out, do it yourself. Anyway, be a better person than the majority of people at your locals and stack up on perfume. Before moving on to the final card, it's worth mentioning that you absolutely have to run three copies of Fire Formation Tanky because generic beast warrior searching hasn't gotten old since the Firefist days. Tiger King is also a good rank 4 monster to go into on occasion. The final Lunalite card is Lunalite Reincarnation Dance, a normal trap that says if a monster you control is destroyed by battler card effect, add up to two Lunalite monsters from your deck to your hand. You can only activate one Lunalite Reincarnation Dance per turn. I don't think I'm even gonna activate one per turn, because I'm not gonna run it. Jokes aside, it's not an awful card or anything, but the deck has just about enough searching utility to basically invalidate this card's existence. Also, what's Rabbit doing there, trying to mop up the moon? And now we raid cats. Consistency gets a 3. Sometimes you open well enough to turbo out a Link Monster and two Leo Dancers, and sometimes you set Blue Cat face down and pass. Could be better, but could be worse. Thank god Tanky exists. Power is a very clear 5. It's an OTK archetype focused on multiple attacking, occasionally enabling go HKs when you smack the opponent in the face with more than 8000 points worth of damage. The recovery is decent. Rabbit, Tiger, Perfume, and especially Wolf give you enough options in the Revival and Recycle department to get you back into the duel and warrant a score of 3. They're kinda lacking in the Protection department as an archetype overall, however, their most important monster has a decent amount of immunity, so because 2.5 isn't a grade, I'm a bit harshly gonna round it down to a grade of 2. Their versatility amounts to a lot of crazy stuff you can do in combination with the floating effects of Cat and Tiger, such as using Zodiac Barrage and Chaka9 for link spamming, applying the light and dark attributes of the archetype for chaos variants, and due to Wolf's effect, there's a good amount of synergy with decks focused on milling. Enough variety for a score of 3. Here's my fairly standard build, using a couple of copies of Armageddon Knight as well as a few hand traps. Also, some slightly unconventional choices such as Zephyros for bouncing back Tiger. When it comes to OTK based archetypes adapted from the anime, they usually don't amount to much beyond a linear flavor of the month playstyle that ends up having a two digit number of long term fans, but Lunalites were apparently blessed by the moon or something because evidently, people find ways to experiment with them to this very day and find all kinds of strategies to employ with just these few cards. While, as we learned over the ages, the power of best girl is a force to be reckoned with, or it used to be before it was put inside a beaker. How oh, well can Please, everybody.
Hello? Is anyone in there? I, I smell really bad. I just want to warn you ahead of time. Wow, it's just like home in here, except less flammable. A visitor? Oh, it has been so long. Come, come closer. Let me have a good look at you. Oh, oh, you're a little rough around the edges, aren't you? In days of old, thousands congregated at my temple, offering me tribute for my slightest blessing. Have you brought me anything this day? Um... <coughs> Have you been chewing on this? Y yeah. I'll take what I can get. I'll grant you one wish. Anything you ask and it will be yours. Wow. Anything, huh? Well, I have a few outstanding warrants in- Hold it. Who doesn't deserve that wish? I've been waiting in line here for centuries. There, uh, isn't a line, sir. No, no, guys. Line. You don't make that mistake all the time. You wouldn't believe it. Now, make your wish. Let me have a fucking, uh, six piece wings, a steak and chicken sandwich with a small coke, and a large coke on the side. Your wish is granted, but beware. A dreadful lesson comes with your desire. What? what? That sandwich in your hand. It is poisoned with a bomb. Oh. I'm still gonna eat it. Wait, don't, don't, no! I wanted that sandwich. Hi there everyone, thank you for watching this episode of Archetype Archive. Sorry it took such an unreasonable amount of time to come out, but the uploads should be a bit more frequent in the following month or so. Special mention to my friend Rizzy, and a big happy birthday to her and all the cats she loves so much. Patreon, Discord, Twitter, yada yada, and I'll see you next time.